Hey, my name is John Siskovich and behind me is the farm brewery. Well, actually I'm on the farm and behind me is the brewery and my farm brewery in Western Connecticut. And I have, this is an ask me anything video. I got a question from Mike Colton. Uh, Mike asked about alternative chicken feeds, specifically duckweed using this pond behind me. I'm gonna discuss why I have not done that yet and uh, traps that you can avoid as a beginning farmer. Now I'm in the middle of uh, I'm in the middle ish of my main pasture. It's like right in the center of the farm. Uh, I got my fields behind me uh, at the moment, and as I turn here, all the buildings are behind me. And there's a man-made pond that, because our property is so wet, this thing stays full of water. It's not very big. It can dry out in droughty years. I've seen it completely dry, and I've been able to walk across it. But in general, it stays wet. Now this might be a great duck pond, um, but ducks were not the topic of today's video duck weed was now mike colton uh sent me in a long message and a link i love getting links to know that people have done been doing research and they're asking my opinion based off of their research instead of just like complete cold call but uh <clears throat> so mike asks i got a cute little pond behind me uh have i tried experimented or researched using duck weed as an alternative feed for raising broiler chickens to offset my feed costs now, the short answer is no, and then the long answer is no for some very specific reasons. When you're, this is for the beginning farmer crowd, uh, when you're starting out, when you're on a piece of land, when you're getting, just see when you're a beginning farmer, um, getting just a good baseline established before you do experiments would be my biggest piece of advice. Uh, there is a trap that you can fall into of growing too many things, raising too many things, extending yourself too far, uh, just making it so that uh, your life is incredibly difficult because you're trying to manage the chaos of too many projects all at once. If you want to get started in livestock, start with pasture raised poultry. Uh, learn your poultry, get that going, move out into pigs, then realize that you're buying a lot of feed in, and then move on to something that eats grass as your land base allows. Um, when you're a vegetable farmer, start with like a good solid, maybe six to a dozen core crops, establish a market, uh, know that there's interest and let the market pull from you. All that to say that for me, I haven't seen a successful model using duckweed yet and I don't have the time or energy or resources to be a pioneer in that regard. Uh, I don't want to be the guy who's really, you know, like, oh, duckweed has really changed my life because to be honest, there's so many things you can do with learning about your poultry nutrition, uh, giving the birds the right nutrition at the right time and growth stage in their life, um, knowing exactly where they are, how to feed them, and how those uh, macro and micronutrients affect their growth rates before you jump into using something like duckweed to offset feed costs. If you're just buying feed from the mill, which I'm very uh, very guilty of, just buying that one feed and feeding that one feed throughout the entire season, then you're missing out on efficiencies that the, uh, the big guys are doing. When you're raising more broilers, you can buy in more feed because you're running through it a lot quicker, which means you can turn over your feed source, which means your feed's not only fresher and uh, free of mycotoxins and any fungus that may be microscopic and you know you just can't see it with your naked eye, um, and you can adjust the feed ration depending on the growth stage of your bird. So um, the more you learn about your nutrition, the more conversation you have with your mill, the more, the bigger effect you're going to have in feed efficiency and actually decreasing your feed costs before you go into an experiment like using duckweed, harvesting duckweed, getting it out to your birds and then seeing if they eat it and then when the duckweed that they don't eat you have to remove that in order to feed fresh duckweed the next day and then you're waiting on stuff to grow so then it's inconsistent uh, with how you're feeding your birds and there's a lot more variables to address uh, when you're doing an experiment versus when you're working with something that has been more researched and more established. Uh, there is a, a push for us to kind of uh, go the unconventional and look for alternatives, but I would uh, suggest caution and uh, frugality and learning the 
basics before you go into experimentation. This is not a critique on Mike. I don't know where Mike is on his process and where uh, what he thinks of this. Uh, it was just my general piece of advice. He left me a link. I'm gonna put it in the show notes for this video so that you guys have research. If anybody else has experimented with this or has input on it, I'd love to hear it in the comments for this video. Um, but in general, establish your baseline. Don't overextend yourself. I'm not using duckweed just because I have so much stuff going on. I can't even keep consistent with these videos. Uh, so I'm just gonna like work on my baseline, stay focused and uh, get the work done that I need to get done. Uh, I hope this was helpful. And uh, yeah, I mean, I'm, it's really distracting that there's birds, the world's waking up, the sun is rising uh, to my right right now in the east. And uh, I'm standing next to a little cute body of water, which just makes me happy. And uh, life is good. I'm shooting videos and uh, my arm's getting tired. So I'm gonna say that tomorrow I'm going to D-Pain, D-I Pain. Um, he's getting ready for a major life change and I wanna talk, uh, he asked me for some advice. I wanna shed some light on that and we'll just continue this conversation in tomorrow's video. Thanks for taking the time to watch and until next time, I will see you out in the field.